Excellent. So if you've been on the internet this week, you're probably already aware that Intel has launched their Haswell E line of CPUs, including X99 chipsets for motherboards like this EVGA X99 Classified. I've had the privilege of having a front row seat for this launch. I've spent a lot of the last week going over a lot of the new motherboards that have come out, as well as the CPUs. And in fact, they have CPU memory videos already on my channel if you guys are interested in more of the specs. However, I've still been left feeling a little bit unfulfilled and I was trying to figure out why that is and I realized it's because I really haven't done that much hands-on actual working with these new CPUs yet. So that's what today's video is all about. I'm actually going to be overclocking. So I'm gonna be showing you guys an overview of this X99 classified motherboard, some of the specs there, but I also have a 5960X CPU that is installed. So I'm gonna be overclocking that as much as I can today. But there is one more thing. I have not just the 5960X, but I've got a 5930K and a 5820K here as well. So if you guys would be so kind as to leave me a comment in the comment section down below, let me know what types of testing you're looking to see with these new processors. I know there's a lot of interest in the 5820K as more of an entry level prospect for this platform. So leave me your comments. Also leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And with that, I'm gonna move this uh, little party inside so I can uh, enjoy some air conditioning while I work. And here it is, the EVGA X99 Classified overclocking a Intel Core i7 5960X. As far as aesthetics go, the board is pretty much all black. You have uh, some red here on the E power logo from the chipset heatsink, um, which folks may like, or if you don't like that, uh, like Jay's Two Cents, for example, uh, he went ahead and masked that off and painted over it and it turned out pretty nice. So you do have options there if you want into modding, of course. Bear in mind that might void your warranty. Uh, but moving right along, uh, this is an EATX motherboard. It's a slightly wider than a typical ATX motherboard, so bear that in mind as far as your case is concerned. Another thing I want to point out as far as case options for this particular motherboard is that they've gone with right angled connectors, as you can see here for the 24 pin main power, for your SATA, of course, but we also have right angled connectors for things like uh, three pin fan connectors here, as well as along the bottom edge of the motherboard, and a six pin PCI Express power right angle connector for uh, extra power to the PCI Express lanes. Now that's not going to be necessary in most configurations unless you're really running like a four-way configuration. That is something to bear in mind if you have a short case and your power supply is right below this bottom edge. Uh, some of these connectors can conflict there. So just keep that in mind and make sure you have a slightly larger case so you can accommodate for that. If the case size isn't a concern, then it actually does do wonders for cable management, keeping things nice and tidy and it, keeping for it from uh, like really popping off the motherboard and getting in the way. So that's pretty cool actually. Rounding out the aesthetics, uh, EVGA gave you a really nice uh, set of, of accessories to go with this board. Pretty much everything you could possibly need, including this EVGA X99 bracket cover. So this goes right over the uh, IO panels here. Uh, so internally, uh, your system will look much nicer with a bit of brush metal black EVGA X99 logo there. Let's talk about connectivity. We have 10 serial AT or Vision 3 6 gigabits per second ports, all those provided by the X99 chipset. We have six USB 3.0, a couple here from the header, and then four more available in the back. They've also done a lot more USB 2.0 in the back, so uh, that's great to have. I like having USB 3 and USB 2. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, M.2 support, and I've been pretty finicky actually about my evaluation of M.2 placement in these new X99 motherboards. So we have an M.2 uh, 2280 slot right here. This is key M, so this is going to be for uh, key M or M and B M.2 drives, like this 880 one right here. 2280 means it's 80 millimeters long, so uh, that's going to fit most of the drives that I've seen right now, but there are different lengths in the specs, so but it would have been nice to see the uh, 2260 and 2242 lengths in there as well to provide a little bit more flexibility. They also went ahead and did an M.2 key E socket over here. That's a little short guy right there, and uh, that one is key E, which means you're not going to be able to Use it, for, use it for SSDs, uh, but you can easily drop in a nice like uh, wireless AC card in there. And uh, it being located right here next to the IO means it'll uh, have easy placement for those uh, external antennas as well. DDR4, of course, is supported across the board on X99 with uh, socket 2011-3 CPUs. And for a full-size ATX board, I will not accept anything less than eight DIMM slots. So good job, EVGA. They've included all eight there. So you can start off with four, then you can add four more in the future.
future if you want to expand your memory support a little bit more. Also uh, supports up to 128 gigabyte memory uh, configurations right now. But really I think when it comes to extra features on top of what you basically get with X99 for EVGA's attempts to differentiate this board, they've really pushed towards overclocking. Hopefully the rest of this video will elucidate that a little bit more. So they have a, an overclocking area right here, including uh, some flip switches here so you can actually turn off uh, your PCI Express lanes. Extremely, extremely helpful if you're going with a multi-card uh, custom water-cooled configuration because it can be a real pain in the butt to remove your cards from that, but you can switch them off here. We have a triple BIOS switch down here as well, so three separate BIOSes and you can just flip the switch to jump back and forth between those. Uh, we also have a debug LED on there, which uh, I just like to have, which is also going to show your CPU temperature when uh, you're in your operating system. You got a turbo button there for automatic overclocking. Of course, surface mounted power and reset switches, which are super helpful to have. But there's a clear CMOS surface mount on the board as well as one on the back I.O., so nice to have both of those options. And then for the voltage read points, we actually have a little breakout cable um, that fits on this little header over here on this side of the board, and uh, that allows for a bunch of individually connected voltage read points. And then they've really beefed up the power delivery. So a uh, 10 phase all digital power delivery that's located right up here for your CPU. They've gone so far as to include two supplemental eight pin CPU power connectors. So that can deliver uh, up to 600 watts of power to the CPU, which no, uh, which no Haswell e-processor is ever going to use, but it's there, which means that in uh, dire situations where you might have voltage drop off, uh, you're, you're, you're going to really eliminate that as a possibility. Uh, another thing that they've done is they've included 150% of the gold that you would typically have in the CPU socket. You can't see it right now, but it is down there. And that is again to help uh, reduce the resistance and to help increase connectivity and uh, to basically give you more stability while you're overclocking. And the last real key feature of this motherboard that the EVGA is very proud of is their GUI BIOS. Uh, so they've updated their UEFI with a new graphical user interface. And um, hey, you know what? I'm going to have the chance to test that in just a second. All right, guys, here's a quick update. And uh, I have everything set up. And if anyone earlier saw the video and went and commented that uh, I was using a stock heatsink fan and I'm suck, then here is the answer to that. It's a Swift Tech H220X. It's now installed and it's doing a great job. Also the memory is set to 2666 so I'm happy to say that the recent BIOS update for the X99 Classified does appear to be working and uh, I also use that little overclocking button that they have on the board or at least apparently I had it in the overclocking position because uh, I don't know if you guys can see but I'm running at 4 gigahertz right now across all 8 cores and uh, it's just doing an IDA64 stress test it's at 1.12 volts on the CPU and I've only topped out at about a little over 60 degrees Celsius on the uh, cores, so my CPU appear, appears to be doing pretty good. Oh, also I put it to the 125 hertz strap, so that apparently is what the the overclocking button does on this EVGA X99 motherboard. But uh, let's see, let's see if we can push it a little bit further. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but the frequency right there, we're at 4.4 gigahertz. I've uh, been creeping up from 4.0, kind of where I started. It actually wasn't the overclock button on the motherboard. It was the uh, it was the XMP for some reason that set my my CPU strap to 125. So I wasn't really sure what that was, but uh, as you can see, just been running for a few minutes here now. It seems to be fairly stable. Uh, CPU temperatures have been reasonable. Uh, we have topped out. It's getting hotter now, so we have seen uh, up to cl getting close to 80 on the max but still pretty comfortable in the in the mid 60s for the most part um, so not too bad although definitely hotter than uh, originally it was only getting up to about 60. All right, guys, so I had a fun night of overclocking last night. I actually had some really excellent results, so I wanted to bring you some of those today. Right now, here is the overclock that I've pretty much been able to achieve that's kind of the maximum now. Um, a few things to bear in mind here. One, one is that I'm running at 4.76 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive for this uh, CPU. That is across all eight cores. I'm doing that by way of the 125 uh, megahertz bus strap that's available on Enthusiast Platform, so that's working out pretty good. Memory is at 2666, so everything's doing great. Uh, as far as temperatures and everything, I am running the IDA64 system stability test. 
Uh, I have seen some maximum temperatures on some of the cores, uh, just over 90 degrees Celsius, which is a little hot, but not terrible. Um, most of the time they're actually running between about 75 and 85 degrees Celsius um, when it's actually under load. Uh, so that's that's well within range. Now, a few things to mention is if, if I was going for this uh, 4.76 gigahertz overclock for full time, one thing is that I w would be doing is a lot more vid val validation and stability testing. Right now I've just been using IDA64. This has been running for just shy of 15 minutes right now and it's been doing great, but I would want to run that for a few hours at least. I'd also want to run some uh, other applications, some video games, some uh, full system st tests, just to make sure I hit all different parts of the CPU and the system to make sure it was stable. That being said, what I would probably do if, was, if I wanted to run this 24-7 is I would back it off a little bit. I wouldn't keep it at 4.76, I'd probably back it off to somewhere in the 4.6 range or even a little bit lower just to keep the temperature down um, because we don't really need to be doing that much. Also voltage right now is at 1.306 which is also uh, about as high as you want to go I'd say for something more long term if you're not using really exotic or high-end cooling. But you guys are probably interested in how I achieved this overclock, and I did so not from within the operating system. EVGA does have their Elite overclocking utility. However, it's still in beta, and the uh, download wasn't working for me. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to use that. But I did do everything from within the BIOS, uh, which was very functional and easy to use, and actually also made use of the, uh, the three-way switch. I was using a couple different BIOS settings to bounce back and forth to go back to uh, a stable reboot of Windows 8, for example. Um, but why don't we jump over into the BIOS now, and I'll show you guys how I did this. So here is the BIOS, and one thing I want to point out, BIOS version is listed right down here in the bottom right, and uh, I'm actually switched to the third BIOS, which I have not used at all, uh, at all so far. That's just to show you guys that uh, you can do a very easy BIOS update. Uh, since it's three distinct BIOSes on this motherboard, uh, it's important that you go and update each one individually. So um, I've updated the first two and I saved this one. Um, but it's easy, you can do it from within the BIOS, you just need a uh, FAT32 formatted uh, uh, USB drive. It'll go ahead and load this up and reboot. Okay, uh, so that was a quick digression. Other thing I want to point out while this is loading, when I was talking about the temperatures earlier, ambient temperature in my house right now is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 27 degrees Celsius. So um, if you guys are considering my uh, temperature numbers from a few minutes ago, that's something to bear in mind too. Okay, so switching back to my overclocked BIOS setting, and uh, let's just take a look at this overall. First off, EVGA has given you a nice dashboard up here at the top. There are not like an advanced and a normal mode for this. This is just the mode that it boots into, which uh, works just fine for me. At the very top, you can see uh, your CPU settings. So you can see uh, your bus clock, for example, right there. You can see the multiplier. Right now I'm at 125 on the, uh, on the B clock and 38 on the multiplier, which gives me a 4.75 gigahertz CPU clock. You can also see some stuff up here like this is an 8-core processor, hyper-threading is enabled. Memory configuration is on the top left. You can see what DIMMs are populated and how um, much capacity is in each, in each one, so 4 4 gigabyte DIMMs. Total capacity, memory speed right there, CPU voltage that's current, currently, and uh, memory voltage that's current set up. PCI Express is in the top right. We have a uh, BY16 PCI Express Gen 3 card installed. We have open slots for the rest of them, so you'd be able to see what's connected there. Your VRM temperatures and your CR CPU temperatures also. The uh, actual workspace is in the lower section here, so it starts you off in the overclock mode. By hitting left and right, you can jump back and forth to overclock, memory, uh, advanced boot, and then for save and exit, and also for your doing your BIOS updates. But um, and the overclock setting here, oh, I, I guess I should also point out we have the mouse that's available, mouse and keyboard. Um, so starting off in the overclocking section, uh, we can see again my CPU frequency, 4, 4751 megahertz. Uh, so the multiplier control, just went ahead and set that to manual. And then for the multiplier here, uh, again, it's at 38. Now I went with the 125 megahertz uh, B clock strap. And that is because actually when I first set the system up, I loaded the XMP profile for the, uh, the G-Skill DDR4 memory that I have. And it automatically set the, uh, the CPU strap to 125. Uh, which I was like, that's that's kind of weird. But when I booted into the OS, I was at four gigahertz. It was nice and stable, and it was like 1.12 volts, which was actually pretty good. And I was totally like rock solid at that. So I was like, well, that's cool. So that's what kind of inspired me to use that 125 uh, megahertz uh, B, B clock strap for that, and that's worked out well for me. So um, bear in mind that that strap does affect. Uh, both the CPU and the memory frequency, which is why the memory is actually set to 2133 right here. But uh, with the 125 hertz strap, it, it boosts it up to 2666. 
Um, a couple things that they could, I think, add here for memory. You can do uh, basic frequency, you can set XMP profiles, and you can set the voltages. Uh, there's no actual granular controlling over the timings, though, so that would be something that EVGA could possibly add with the BIOS update in the future. Um, back to the overclock setting, though. Multiplier setting here is pretty simple. It's pretty much locked in to do all threads, which or all cores, which I kind of like, although you can do individual limits per core. So if you can get a higher overclock on just one or two cores, for example, you can set that up. Uh, you can also set the non-turbo ratio override, so that will make it so that when it's not turboing up to a high frequency, um, you can change what it will turbo back down to, or it will un-turbo to, I suppose. You can also do stuff like ring ratio. Uh, here's your base clock frequency settings. So I have that at 125.03. Uh, most of the other stuff I have set to automatic. Uh, but for voltage, uh, definitely go for adaptive voltage. Um, you can go ahead and dial in, for example, uh, override at first and set a manual vid. Uh, that's okay for setting up. But if you're actually running it for any period of time, just use adaptive. It's it's much it saves your power and that sort of thing. So you can set your voltage target right here, which I have at 1.297. I've dumped it up a little bit from what I had it last night. And then I actually did a plus 10 offset um, to give me just a little bit more wiggle room, um, which bumps it up to about 1.31 volts um, total that I'm running on. Now, uh, the offset voltage here, bear in mind it's a whole number, but that's actually telling you uh, hundredths of, of, of a voltage, hundredths of a volt, I guess. Um, so plus 10 will actually is, is adding uh, point one zero volts to this so just just bear that in mind if you're doing that other than that you got some control for like ring voltage uh cpu voltage input pch voltage and the fiber settings um it's pretty straightforward and pretty direct there's not a whole lot of really advanced settings which i don't mind too much because that's not something that i i dabble in a whole lot i, I usually go for basic uh, voltage and uh, and base clock and, and possibly multiplier overclocking. Uh, in advance you have stuff like CPU, PCIe configuration, PCH, here's where you can go into the SATA configuration for example uh, to see what drives you have connected. Uh, you can also go into PCIe configuration right there for what drives you have connected. Um, for onboard devices is where you would control your M.2 sockets. Bear in mind you will disable a couple functions uh, but they do tell you here. So for example if you want to set up your M.2 uh, for SSD slots, it's going to disable uh, USB 3.0 port 3, port 3 um, which, which is, it does tell you that, so that's cool. You also have a hardware monitoring area right here where you can go over and set up some fan controls, including smart fan control functions, and you can actually go in here and set it to a few different uh, default fan speeds at different uh, temperatures, so that's cool. They give you a couple different uh, dividers for that. Uh, boot, of course, pretty straightforward. You do have uh, quiet boot and fast boot options, which I like. There's a lot of speaker beeps that this thing does when it boots up, and being able to turn those off is kind of nice. Uh, and then also, uh, there there was a cool feature I wanted to show you. Wait, where did it go? Oh, it's in advanced, huh? Onboard device. Power. Ah, oh yeah, power management. Uh, the board has dark mode enabled, which is cool, so you can flip that, and that will turn all the LEDs on the board off if you want it to be dark and quiet. Uh, you also have uh, ERP uh, power savings mode that you can also turn on, which I'm not going to do because we're not in Europe. Uh, that's that's pretty much it for the BIOS. And actually, that's that's pretty much it for this video, too. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a bit lengthier, but uh, I really wanted to dive in and do some hands-on stuff. So uh, hopefully you have enjoyed it. This has been the X, X99 Classified uh, motherboard from EV, EVGA. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description. I've been overclocking the Intel Core i7-5960X. Oh, and a big, big shout out to Swift Tech for their work on the H220X. They did a fantastic job and it's been performing like, champ, like a champ so far today. So uh, leave me a like, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Again, leave me comments because I do have two more CPUs, which I, I haven't even really started working on yet. So I want to know what you guys want to see me do with those. We'll see you all very, very soon. <laughs>